Good day, Cassie. First of all, let me thank you for agreeing to do this video interview with me today. Back in December, a little over a month ago, uh, back in 2022, you and I discussed a presentation to management that you were to make. And I had suggested to you that you use the spin selling framework from Neil Rackham of spin selling fame to organize your presentation. Uh, before we go into that, though, could you please share with our audience a little bit about your background and learning and development, and then we'll get started? Absolutely. Thank you, Guy. Uh, first off, I just wanted to share my appreciation for you and your time and attention to me reaching out. Um, you're definitely a coach in the field, and I feel that um, you've given me a, a great guidance. So thank you for that. Um, but just a little bit about me. Um, after 12 years uh, of supporting uh, educational leadership in K-12, I transitioned into corporate education in 2018. And uh, since then, I've worn various hats to support uh, workforce capability of computer and data engineers as they transition into the workforce. And many of those companies were Fortune 100 and 500 companies like Cognizant Dell and Baylor College of Medicine. And I currently serve as the Senior Learning and Development Consultant at Faithful and Gold. And there I design and align our technical training program uh, to the functional needs for our global semiconductor support engineering services. Well, thank you for that. So for our audience, I just want to go into a little bit about what SPIN is in case they don't know that. But SPIN is an acronym. It's really a Socratic approach to selling, as it was explained to me by my boss, Bill Wiggenhorn, back in uh, 1981. I go long, uh, way back with this, and I got a chance to work with Neil Rackham. But SPIN stands for situation, and then problems and or opportunities, and then the implications of those problems or opportunities, and then the needs payoff. And the, the concept is, is basically you're walking your client down the primrose path, so to speak. And just like any good lawyer, you ask questions and you're looking for some insight from the answers to take you and, and help you modify your next set of questions. So you go from what's the situation, what's the implication, uh, or problems or opportunities within that uh, situation. And then what are the implications? What are the big deal problems or opportunities versus the minor kinds of things? And then the needs payoff is a statement that says, if I have this product or service, um, and it, it will pay off your needs. It'll meet your needs. Is that worthwhile to you? So it's kind of a win-win approach to sales. And that's one of the things I really liked about it. Now, I've used this SPIN framework in my own presentations to my clients, my prospects, uh, part of my active listening with them if they told me about their situation. And then I would clarify what they had told me and try to tease out you know, what's really the important part of what their request is. So I would understand, you know, their situation, their problems or opportunities, what the implications were, and then the need to be paid off. Um, so can you start us with a little bit about, uh, you know, you had this presentation, what was that all about? Um, and then, you know, get into how you used SPIN as a framework, what you might have modified about that. And then tell us a little bit about the presentation itself and, and how your audience reacted to all of this. Yes, absolutely. So uh, part of my knowledge base is framed around the pedagogical world. And going into corporate, obviously, you have to have that connection with the business side of things and how they work and how they connect to the goals and the master planning from the business and how L&D supports that. So uh, my challenge was the need to reframe my delivery to better appeal to my business-centric audience. And I didn't want to sound professorial. That, that's that's way, which way we go when, when we're learning experts. The question I had for you was, what is the best way I can connect our learning needs and strategy through the lens of a business executive, um, especially for those that are thinking global, right? Uh, creating alignment is my forte, but I wanted to leverage my simple presentation of what's going on in L&D and redirect that focus on recruiting support for learning and development by appealing to their logos. Um, and Guy, after our discussion, I felt better equipped to translate the learning and development benefits to a discussion about opportunity, productivity, and a more effective, effective use of our um, investment. 
Um, I adapted the approach uh, towards an opportunity to repurpose our time as experts in a room thinking together towards a capability problem. Um, I also adopted the wording of training into capability terms of inputs and outputs uh, to relate the training to compensation and unit labor costs. And that, that was very strong for them and it connected that immediately. Um, how it played out, uh, I think I'm very, very happy with the outcome of the conversation. I would say that your advice to use the spin selling model reserve resulted in 100% engagement of my audience towards their buy-in and support of the LND function, as well as an extension into innovative value points that we can communicate to our clients. Um, and in essence, I feel like we were creating learning and development champions for our cause. Um, in my approach of using your feedback, I felt I was powerful for my executive team to visualize training in terms of ROI and where we stood from a business angle in terms of our current state in training. Um, my during this session served as a facilitator of a discussion more so where I illustrated logical facts versus our predicted growth. Uh, to set scaffold metacognitive thinking related to training solution, I presented four questions uh, through this point of spin, uh, then assigned specific people to respond at the end. Um, each question led them toward supporting a training framework uh, centered around capability and performance. So it's almost like I was getting them to answer that question for me. Uh, this was a plan to promote that engagement, but the entire group was fully immersed in discussion and solution creation. Uh, my 30 minute presentation about LD became an hour of creating executive champions for learning. Very, very cool. I, I think that, yeah, the secret from the whole Socratic approach is asking the questions, have people come to a, a, give an answer. And especially if you're in this group, if they each give answers, they can see where they are themselves aligned or not. And they can talk through those things. And it's really kind of a pull model rather than a push model and getting right. information out on the table. Uh, so my, my goal here was to talk about spin because that's you know something I, I found very, very powerful. Can you see uh, how you might uh, apply this otherwise as a kind of a, a, a framework that you can adapt to your situation? Absolutely. Um, just thinking of the insights uh, about my experience, when I first started looking into LND before COVID hit, there were not many roles titled learning and development, yada, yada, this and consultant advisor or whatnot on LinkedIn. Uh, they weren't there because they didn't exist as much. And now, L&D is this great new solution where people like me have found a home. Uh, this need has existed within business in a very innate way uh, to growth and success. It has been there. Like people like you, you guys have been in the business for a very long time. Uh, what is different now from my experience is the responsibility to make training more about building a culture of learning uh, that promotes capability at the speed of technology. We're trying to keep up with that. Uh, business is moving very quickly, and we have to figure out what do we need to do to keep with that pace. Uh, people need to learn faster, better, and still be human. Um, and this experience allowed me to evangelize that philosophy so that my team can help do their jobs. And so from my end, advising other people to think in, in terms of using SPIN to action with leadership on the business side, but also not doing it in a way where you're telling them, but more in a way where you're investigating it and where it becomes part of a solutions oriented framework that they love to think in. Well, thank you. So are there any uh, other insights or anything else that uh, you, you can think of that we might want to share with our audience here today? Um. In, in, in my state of thinking in the semiconductor world, as well as uh, thinking global, um, it really matters um, how you're building these relationships on executive teams and like, who you're talking to and who's in the room and, and being able to leverage those discussions that um, you're a seller. You're selling this concept of learning and development within capability and building performance and um, being able to think in that in terms of, of those needs as opposed to, oh, this is just about people training or people learning. We, we want to reevaluate that type of discussion. So um, that's probably the most important thing to kind of have in the background as you're building these conversations. 
Yeah, I, I, I agree. I get making that connection to the real business uh, needs, the critical business issues and all that, and making sure it's not just training or learning for the sake of training or learning. It's really for no. purposes of business and, and business uh, process uh, maintenance, sustainment, or improvement, uh, depending on what the client's issues are. Absolutely. Working with these SMEs, and my main question is, okay, what task do they need to do when they're learning how to do this particular topic. And that transition thought for them is a bit difficult because they're in the weeds of doing the work. Yeah. And, and so when speaking with SMEs, my question is, what task do they need to do and what will get them to that task? And building out that training model uh, within those objectives is, is that, that creator. And of course, that's on the learning and development side and hopefully building out those objectives and as how, you know, they connect to the learning on the business side, it makes things a lot more clear about where the training is going. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to do this with me. And uh, I'm more than happy to uh, continue our uh, occasional discussions about uh, the learning and development profession and uh but thank you for helping me to kind of spread the word and share, I think, a, a powerful Socratic model that I think others can use, uh, adapt to their needs. And uh, that, that's my goal anyway. Yes. And thank you for letting me share my story and um, how to help others. And thank you, everyone, for listening. And uh, please connect with me. I love to help. I'll put uh, your contact information in the show notes in the YouTube video. Thanks, Cassie. Thank you, Guy. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye.